Bronchiectasis refers to dilation and destruction of large bronchi caused by chronic infection and inflammation. When bronchiectasis affects many areas of the lung, it is referred to as diffuse bronchiectasis, and when it affects only one or two areas, it is referred to as focal bronchiectasis. Diffuse bronchiectasis develops in patients with genetic, immune and anatomic defects that affect the airway. Cystic fibrosis is the most common cause of bronchiectasis together with immunodeficiencies. Diffuse bronchiectasis is an uncommon complication of more common conditions such as Sjogren's syndrome. And allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is an hypersensitivity reaction to aspergillus species and it occurs most common in people with asp Focal bronchiectasis develops from untreated pneumonia or obstruction that is due to foreign bodies and tumors. Mycobacteria can cause focal bronchiectasis as well, colonize the lungs of patients with bronchiectasis due to other disorders. In the part of physiology, all the causative conditions impair airway clearance mechanisms and host defenses, resulting in an inability to clear secretions. This predisposes patients to chronic infection and inflammation. As a result of frequent infections, most common with Haemophilus influenza, Pseudomonas and aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, and Streptococcus pneumonia. The airways become inspired with viscous mucus containing inflammatory mediators and pathogens, and slowly becomes dilated, scared, and distorted. Histologically, bronchial walls are thickened by edema, inflammation, and new vascularization. Destruction of the surrounding interstitium and alveoli causes fibrosis, emphysema, or both. Emphysema or both. Superinfection with mild drug resistant organisms can cause recurrent exacerbations and worsen airflow limitation on pulmonary functional tests. Pulmonary hypertension and right sided heart failure may ensue because of functional lung tissue decreases. Symptoms characteristically begin insidiously and gradually worsen over the years, and the major presenting symptoms of bronchiectasis is chronic cough that always produces large volumes of thick, tenacious purent sputum. Dyspnea and wheezing are common in patients. Hemopsis, which can be massive, is due to new vascularization of the airways from the bronchial arteries. Acute exacerbations of the disease, due to new or worsened infection, increase the extent of cough volume and appearance of sputum production, and low-grade fever may also be present. Halitosis and abnormal breath sounds including crackles, rionchi, and wheezing are typical signs of bronchiectasis. Finger clubbing can also be present in these patients, and in advanced cases, hypoxemia and signs of pulmonary hypertension will be present together with right-sided heart failure. Diagnosis of bronchiectasis is based on history, physical examination or radiologic testing, beginning with a chest X-ray. In bronchiectasis, it is distinguished by more voluminous daily production of purine sputum and dilated airways on imaging studies. X-ray findings suggestive of bronchiectasis include a scattered irregular opacities that are caused by mucus plugs, honeycombing, and rings caused by thick and dilated air was located perpendicular to the X-ray beam. Bronchiectasis that is due to cystic fibrosis develops predominantly in upper lobes, whereas that due to other causes is more diffuse or predominates the lower lobes. High resolution CT scan is the test of choice for defining the extent of bronchiectasis, and pulmonary function tests can be held for documenting baseline function and following the progression of disease over time. To diagnose the cause, the tests that help diagnose the cause include sputum evaluation, including training and cultures for bacterial and fungal infection, sweat chloride testing to diagnose cystic fibrosis, which should be done even in older patients, rheumatoid factor and other serologic tests to look for connective tissue diseases, immunoglobulin measurements such as aspergillus precipitins, Immunoglobulin A, eosinophilia throughout allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, and alpha-1 and trypsin levels 
documents, alpha 1 and trypsin deficiency. Bronchoscopy can be done whenever anatomic or obstructing object or lesion is suspected. Treatment of bronchic disease include prevention of exacerbations with an antibiotic and regular vaccination. Additional treatment depends on the cause. That is, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is treated with corticosteroids and possibly with an azo antifungal. Patients with immunoglobulin or alpha-1 and trypsin deficiency should be receiving replacement therapy. And annual vaccination against hemophilus influenza and vaccination every five years against pneumococcin is indicated. Measures to help clear circulation include a postural drainage and chest percussion, positive expiratory pressure devices, extra pulmonary percussive ventilators, pneumatic vest and autogenic drainage will be used. Acute exacerbations are treated with antibiotics and increased efforts to clear sputum from the airways with the use of bronchodilators and mucolytics. Inflammation is treated with inhaled or oral corticosteroids. Antibiotic choice depends on whether the patients have cystic fibrosis or non-cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis. And antibiotic selection for cystic fibrosis is guided by sputum culture. In these cases, Treatment is with multiple antibiotics such as tobramycin, astronam, ceftazidine, ticacillin, clavulanate, and cefepin. In summary, bronchitis is a dilation and destruction of larger bronchi caused by chronic infection and inflammation. And the common causes are cystic fibrosis, immune defects, and recurrent infections, though some cases seem to be idiopathic. Symptoms are chronic cough and purient sputum expectorations. Some patients may also have fever and dyspnea. Diagnosis based on history and imaging, usually involving high resolution CT scan, though the standard chest X ray can be diagnostic. And treatment and prevention of acute exacerbations with antibiotics, drainage of secretions, and management of complications such as super infection and hemophilia. Okay, thank you, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, and share video with your